Hi guys, welcome back to a page in the chapter or welcome if you are new here. My name is Paige and today we are going through the worst books that I read in 2022. So welcome back for a little bonus video this week. I have so much end of the year content that I need to kind of wrap up and get out to you guys before it's so late in the year that it doesn't make sense to do it anymore. So we're doing a little bonus video this week. I have planned for a couple more bonus videos to be occurring over the next couple months. So whilst they can't guarantee that I will upload every Wednesday and Sunday, I have planned to upload every single Wednesday and occasionally some Sundays. So I do hope that you enjoy that and are looking forward to that and are looking forward to seeing more of my face on your screen. I mean, why wouldn't you be? But we are getting negative today and talking about the worst books that I read in 2022. Although there's not very many of them. I had an insanely good reading year. I really struggled to pick books for this video. There were like really obvious ones to pick that I'd given like one or two stars. And then other than that, I just didn't have many. I don't have 10 that's for sure and I definitely have a lot less worse books than I had best books which if you are interested in knowing my best books of the year is a video that is already up on my channel and you are welcome to go and check that out but I only have six books to share with you today as my worst books of 2022 it was just a really good reading year and as much as I love making these worst books videos or like books not worth the hype videos or things like that I do quite like that in general I'm really enjoying every book that I pick up. I don't think that is necessarily a bad thing. I did have a lot of three star reads though, like a lot of like mid, like I liked it but it didn't blow me away kind of books. So if you would like to know about the I liked it but it didn't blow me away then let me know and maybe I can make a video on those too. But as far as the extreme go, there weren't many bad ones. So if you guys like the sound of this video and you would like to stick around and see more, then do please feel free to hit that big red subscribe button down below and stay tuned for future content. As I said, I am uploading weekly, every single Wednesday, and occasionally there will be bonus videos on a Sunday, like the one you're watching right now. Do also feel free to check me out on Instagram and Twitter at Page in Chapter so that you can get the updates about when the bonus videos are going to be coming out and things like that because that is where I upload all of that sort of good content. And so without further ado, let's get in to the books that let me down in 2022. So the first book that is one of the worst books that I read in 2022 is a book that I very graciously gave two stars and I think looking back I should have probably given it one star and that is The Spanish Love Deception by Eleanor Armas. I know this book is big and I read it because it's big and I read this when I was kind of first discovering the adult romance genre or like not really discovering because it's not like I'd never read from the genre before but this was like the first time where I was really starting to explore the genre. And this was like a fake dating enemies to lovers office romance, which I really thought had everything that I would like about it. Fake dating is one of my favorite tropes. I am not averse to a good enemies to lovers. And I like exploring this in weird settings. The fake dating in an academic setting, like in the love hypothesis, one of my favourite books of all time so I really thought maybe the office setting would be fun. So the main premise of this book is our main character is Spanish and she is going home for her sister's wedding and her ex and his fiance are going to be there. Fiance, new girlfriend, can't really remember which and so she enlists her office rival to come with her and be her fake date so that she doesn't look quite so pathetic at this wedding. And now that I have a little bit more experience, and mostly experience that came from the reading of this book, I know that a book that is marketing itself as a fake dating, enemies to lovers, office romance, is trying to do too much and it's not gonna end well. So in order for it to really exist in this office setting, the reason that our two main characters were enemies or rivals was just completely arbitrary. Like our female main character just latched on to something and clung to it in a way that no real human being would and if they do then they are a 12 year old girl at 
at school. Like, it was not rational behaviour. I mean, fake dating arguably is never realistic or rational behaviour, but most of the time I can't actually believe that our characters would be in these kinds of situations, and I don't mind a little bit of silly in my books, but I do need to believe the reasons for the actions of these characters. So again, for comparison in The Love Hypothesis, whilst it's not something I could ever see anyone doing in real life, I do feel like the rationale behind why our characters entered into a fake dating situation made sense in my brain, and so I could buy into it. I could forgive the fact that it was a little bit silly and just really like buy into it. The fact that these characters didn't like each other just wasn't believable to me, which already strike through on the, en the enemies to lovers or rivals to lovers. It was also just so clear to me that our hero, like the hero of this book was just obsessed with our main character and I really don't mind books of like a he's like head over heels for her, he adores her kind of romances. Doesn't bother me, like to read that. But when it's kind of creepy because one of them believes that they dislike each other and the other one is learning Spanish just in case he gets to go and like see her family because they fall in love. Again, it just wasn't believable. I don't believe that a normal person would act the way that our hero did. And honestly, it just kind of creeped me out the way he was acting. Like it wasn't just a, oh, he is head over heels for her kind of thing. It was a, this guy is bordering on stalker level. Really really did not like this book. In terms of the fact that it was a romance book and thus did bring me some kind of joy and enjoyment, back then I gave it two stars but looking back now I have read so much better romance that that is easily a one star read for me. Continuing on with the slightly disappointing romance feed, we have Love on the Brain by Ali Hazelwood. Now, as we've discussed, Love Hypothesis adored it, loved it, was very, very excited to sink my teeth into this book, but it was just a huge letdown. So this follows our main character B and she is offered a position at NASA to work on like space helmet uh, because she's a neurobiologist and so she's working to try and build helmets for the astronauts that are good for their brains or something along those lines. But when she gets to NASA her co-lead is Levi, a guy who has disliked her ever since grad school and who is actively going out of his way to make sure that she cannot do her job there, making sure she doesn't have the resources that she needs in order to succeed at NASA and trying to undermine her every decision, or so she thinks. Now that in and of itself is fine and I did really like Levi as a love interest, I felt like he was very engaging, very very similar to Adam from The Love Hypothesis but again I can forgive it because if it's not broken don't fix it. But the storylines just didn't do it for me. So this is very, very neurobiology heavy, which I am not interested in. I do enjoy that Ali Hazelwood enjoys talking about biology so much, but to me it was really boring and made this book a lot longer than it needed to be. Like it felt like she was just filling the book with loads of facts about bio like biology and Marie Curie in order to get away with the fact that she didn't quite know what to do with these two characters. I also just found the ending of this book to be absolutely ludicrous. I do feel like that is a pretty common piece of feedback on this book is that the ending is just absolutely ludicrous. <laughs> and I think for the most part I'm just a little bit tired of seeing Ali Hazelwood do the same things over and over again. I very much like the academic setting and the science setting. She can continue doing that and I understand that that is her hook and I'm not saying it in that sense. But like we had this which was enemies or like rivals to lovers, we had the fake dating of the love hypothesis, love theoretically is coming out this year and that is also fake dating in an academic setting again. Like it just kind of feels like we're getting the same types of relationships, the same characters, the same kinds of smut scenes, like all of her guys are like Adonis men with massive pieces of equipment that just t tear their women apart, like it is just kind of the same thing over and over and over again. And this just personally didn't have that spark or that connection that really gripped me the way the love hypothesis did. Like the love hypothesis is not without its issues but there was something about the dynamic between the characters. I really am not putting this very eloquently but there was just something about that book 
that made me love it despite the fact that it had its issues, despite the fact that it was slightly ludicrous and unbelievable. But this book just took a step in the wrong direction, it took a step more towards being ludicrous and unbelievable and lost some of that character depth and so this one was a two star for me and I really didn't enjoy it and we will see what I think of Love Theoretically when it comes out later this year. So the next little stint of books that I have to share with you are fantasy books. Now it is important to remember that A I didn't read much fantasy last year because I really hit a romance vibe and the reason that I stopped reading fantasy and hit a romance vibe is because fantasy just really kind of stopped doing it for me and so do what you will with these reviews because like they're fair and they are my reviews but they are also coming from a person who was really just kind of losing momentum with the fantasy genre. The first book will probably be not that surprising to you if you saw me film this video and that is The Last Sacrifice by Richelle Mead which is the last book in the Vampire Academy series. I filmed a video where I read all of the Vampire Academy books in 24 hours and I hated this. I can't believe that I stayed up all night to read this. I gave it one star, it was my least favourite of the series. I will say that a lot of people then commented on that video telling me to read the like other series set in this world, um, or the spin-off series, I'm not entirely sure what it is, but a lot of people told me that based on my review of this book I would probably like that one. So this one could just be a taste thing, but I really just got to the end of this book and was like, what happened to the original plot of the movie? Like, it just didn't fit into the rest of the storyline. Like, it just felt like we got here and it was like, okay, what are the most random, out of nowhere stuff we can make happen? But also, we're not going to have a lot of stuff happen, we're just going to fill it with loads and loads and loads of crap that is going to be really boring to read. Now, again, bear in mind, it would have been like four or five o'clock in the morning when I was reading this, so it's going to take a lot for me to be really entertained at that time of a morning, so maybe this book is not as boring as past me thought it was but in the interest of telling you all of my least favorite books and least rated books of 2022 this was a book that i gave one star it was one of my least favorite books of that series and just looking at the stats i did not like this book and so i feel like i'm gonna share that with you but for more in-depth thoughts probably worth going and watching that video because i don't really remember why I hated this book. I'm sure that past me had a very valid reason but present me is not remembering what it is. <laughs> now these next two are probably gonna surprise a few of you but please bear with me. Please do not immediately unsubscribe and hate me forever because not what it looks like but I have Vengeful by V.E. Schwab and A Gathering of Shadows by V.E. Schwab but just just bear with me. I'm gonna talk about this one first. I absolutely adored Vicious by V.E. Schwab which is book one to this but the reasons that I adored that were because I really enjoyed the flashbacks that were very Dark Academia-esque, the real discussion of what is good and what is evil and the way religion was really brought into this kind of discussion of morality and good versus evil. felt like V.E. Schwab did it in a really really interesting way and I am really a sucker for books where religion is critiqued in a fantasy type setting. I just really enjoy that. Blame my parents for putting me in a Catholic school growing up but critiques of particularly like Christianity and Catholicism I just I will eat that up. So I then picked up this book and was just disappointed with it to be honest with you. I spent a lot of the book being like how does this link at all to the first book and then it did all come together in a very satisfying way and it's not that I hated it or anything like that. I just think personally this book would have worked better if it wasn't its own separate book. Like take out a lot of the filler that's in this book and put the meaningful parts of this book onto the end of the first book and just have the first book be a really, really long, chunky standalone. I would rather that than them being two separate books but so much of this book just not linking at all to the first storyline and just being really quite boring to read for large chunks of it. So whilst I did in the end kind of enjoy where this story went and V.E. Schwab kind of pulled it back a little bit for me and she's still one of my favourite authors and I still really enjoyed what she was trying to do with this series. I just really wish that it had been one big chunky standalone that just had all of the really important bits than so many of like the filler. 
Like, for instance, I'm really not entirely sure that Marcella was particularly relevant to this story. Relevant in the sense that her storyline is needed for there to be a storyline at all, for there to be a second book, but if it had all been one book, then I do kind of feel like Marcella not needed at all, and it's a really big chunk of this book is just Marcella's story. We don't even see Victor and Eli for quite a while. So, didn't actually tell you what this series is about, but Vicious Book 1 by V.E. Schwab follows our main characters Victor and Eli and we follow them in the present day setting where they are mortal enemies and trying to track each other down and kill each other and then we also see them through flashbacks from when they were at university and they were actually best friends and through these flashbacks we start to discover this very dark tale of how their theoretical study of medicine led to them carrying out experimental research looking at like extraordinary humans and humans who have survived near-death experiences and things like that and it all becomes very dark in this kind of academic setting and I do feel like the first book is one of a kind incredible book but this one not so much and so then to talk about a gathering of shadows i have discussed this book and my dislike for it many a time i loved the first book a darker shade of magic and i then went on to love the third book which i felt like was again an incredible wrap-up but this middle book was a waste of time and didn't need to exist. Doesn't influence the third book, doesn't draw off the second book. You could literally skip this book in the trilogy, just look up some of the like important bits on spark notes just in case you might want the background for the next book but it is not necessary for you to read this book to gain any sort of knowledge further knowledge from the first book or to then go into the third book this is why i didn't like these two specifically and why they these are two of my worst reads of last year but it is not a V.E. Schwab thing or a this series thing it is these books specifically as individual books within a wider series and not as representations of the series hopefully that makes sense and so the final final book that was my worst book like categorically was my worst book of last year the one you are all waiting to hear about and i have saved until the end because it is the worst most atrocious atrocious one and you already know what it's going to be and that is ugly love by miss colleen hoover i have unhauled this book because i needed it out of this house it was going to corrupt the goodness of all of my other books with its shitness. I would give this book zero stars if I could, but unfortunately that wasn't an option, so sadly I had to give it one star, but my god was this book atrocious. So this book follows our main character. She has moved into an apartment building, I believe with her brother, and this is like a brother's best friend trope, so it follows them as they engage in a friends with benefits sort of situation. The hero of this book, who I believe is called Miles, is really not emotionally available because when he was a teenager he fell in love with his stepsister and had a baby with her, his stepsister, and like that's a completely irrelevant detail why couldn't he have just fallen in love with a girl in his class and they had a very traumatic event happen in their relationship that broke them up like why did it have to be his stepsister it was just for shock value and i didn't like it i will say colin hoover did have it as like they had met and kind of had some kind of romantic relationship before they found out that they were step siblings to me still very very weird and a completely unnecessary point of the book like this story could have been told without that element it also just in very classic colin hoover has some very very weird and disturbing sentences and i'm sure you have seen them all over twitter if you would like to know to see them then just type in colin hoover weird quotes or or ugly love quotes and they will come up i'm not going to stand here and relive the traumatic experience but yeah this book was just horrible i hated it and i swear to god i'm never reading colleen hoover again i was hesitant to pick up any of her books anyway because most of her books are not the kind of thing i would enjoy or i'm interested in but this one was like a friends with benefits to lovers kind of situation and was marketed as a romance so I really thought that if there was any Colleen Hoover book to try it would be this one but the writing style is like 2012 Wattpad the story itself is weird and not particularly romantic in nature I absolutely hated this book fair play if you like it like whatever but 
I really disliked this book and it is not the kind of romance that I want to be reading, it's not the kind of thing that I want on my shelves and I don't want to go anywhere near Colleen Hoover books ever again. <laughs> and so there we have the worst books that I read in 2022. I hope that you enjoyed seeing these and you've got some books to uh, maybe potentially avoid or if my reviews were actually kind of something that you listen to and you're like oh you didn't like it for that reason but I really like that in a book. Hopefully you found some recommendations then if that is the case. If you enjoyed seeing this bonus video today and you would like to see more from me then do please feel free to hit that big red subscribe button down below and stay tuned for future content. I will be uploading every single Wednesday and then occasionally on a Sunday if the need permits. Is that a saying? If the need permits. I don't think it is. If the if my schedule permits and if the need arises. There we go, those two sentences. <laughs> I do hope that you guys have enjoyed this video and you have enjoyed seeing the books that I didn't particularly enjoy reading last year. Overall, it was a really, really good reading year. Do please check out the best books that I read in 2022 because those books definitely deserve shout outs. Those authors definitely deserve shout outs and you deserve to read such fantastic books. So do please feel free to go and check that out. I hope you guys are having a fantastic week. You are enjoying everything you are reading and there are no reading slumps in your future. And I will see you on Wednesday for my next video. Bye guys.